Hello crafters! Welcome to this week's Tutorial Tuesday. So last week, as you know, I posted a video on how to crochet Tunisian cables, and today I decided I'm going to keep in the same theme, and you might be wondering why are we keeping in the theme of cables, and that is because I had a viewer, Amila, ask how I crocheted this. This right here is my sweater I'm working on that I say I'm working on, but really I started it last fall and this is as far as I've gone because I've jumped around to different projects and then school and life got in the way. But today I'm going to show you what pattern I am using to make this particular sweater to get this look. And in particular I'm going to be showing how to do these thick, long, wide cables. If you're wondering about these smaller, narrower looking cables. These are just front post and back post double crochet done right on top of each other. No cable crisscrossing, just those front post and back post double crochet in a straight line going up to get that texture. But we're going to jump right in and learn how to crochet this other bigger cable that's on this pattern. Now really quick before we actually start the tutorial, I'm going to just mention some things that would be good to know before tackling this project. This is a little more complicated project just because it involves so many front post and back post double crochet and front post and back post treble crochet. So before starting this project, I would make sure that you have a really good grasp of front post and back post double crochet and treble crochet, and also it wouldn't hurt if you already are familiar with how to work a cable pattern. I'll link a video up there showing how to work the basic cable pattern that this project is built off of, but this project will be a lot easier if you are already comfortable with those specific techniques. For the tutorial today, I'm going to be using a size H aluminum boy hook. I personally prefer tapered hooks versus inline. And the yarn I'm going to be using is some Mandala. This is from the Color Scheme Pixie. And this is actually left over from my scarf project that I was showing in last week's tutu. Yes, I finished the main part of it. Yay! So in the pattern today, I'm going to leave a border of three on either side. I've just three double crochet just to create a border for us to work. So we're going to need a first row that has a total of 14 double crochet stitches. You can work this however you want. I'm going to work this up really quick with a foundationless double crochet row. So here I have a first row of 14 double crochet. So whether you decide to do a foundation chain and then work back across to get your 14 double crochet, or whether you do the 14 double crochet using the foundationless technique, just make sure you end up with this first row of 14 double crochet. Next row is pretty simple. We're going to start by working on our border, so we're going to chain three, turn our work, this chain three counts as our first double crochet, and we're going to do two more to create this border. So I'm just gonna come in right here, work my second double crochet, and work a third double crochet in my third spot. And now we're going to work the right half of the cable. So each half of the cable, we're working by doing three front post or back post double crochet. Just depends on which row we're on. So for this row, we're going to do front post double crochet. And I'm gonna do that on the next three stitches. So that's the first half of our cable there. But with this cable, we want to create a space between it. So to create a space, we're going to work two double crochet in the next two spots. So we're gonna work on the top, not as a front post. So come to the top of the next one, right there, and work just a normal double crochet. Come to the next spot and work another normal double crochet in the very top of the stitch. And that's going to create that kind of back set space between the sides of our cable. So now we're gonna work the next half of our cable by doing three more front post double crochet on those next three stitches. And then we're going to finish off the row by doing just three regular double crochet to create just a border. So one, 
and two. And then we'll work the third one and the very top of our chain three. That we're counting as our very first double crochet. So now we're going to essentially work the same kind of row for our next one, where we have the sides of the cable with the space between them and then another side of the cable. But this time, because we're going to be turning our work, and wherever we did a front post double crochet on this row, when we come back across, we're going to do back post double crochet. So chain three as my turning chain, and it's also my first double crochet. And work two more double crochet for my border. And now those next three stitches that we see here, those are those front post double crochet. So now I'm going to work a back post double crochet around each of those. And a second back post double crochet. And a third back post double crochet. And again, we want to create that gap. So to create the gap, we work two double crochet in the two from the previous round. So not any kind of front post or back post stitch, it's just normal double crochet. And then what's nice is this row is kind of symmetrical, so we're just gonna work what we did coming to the middle in the reverse order going back across. So we're at our front post double crochet from the previous row, so on each of those three, we are going to do a back post double crochet this time. And as with all crochet cables, this project will have a front and a back. So the back side's not very pretty, but the front side is gonna have the beautiful cable design. And then three double crochet in my last three spots to finish up the border for this row. So now we've completed three rows. We're going to do one more row that was like the second row we did with the front post double crochet. We're gonna work that exactly the same way across and then we're gonna get into where we start closing the gap and then the cable itself. So essentially what we've done so far in these first four rows is we've created these cables, these two sides of the cables where we have this, I guess like almost indented, just double crochet space between them. And then we have the other side of the cable on top. Now this is what we do to create the length of these cables. And you can repeat this pattern as many times as you want to make the cable as long or as short as you want. When you are ready to work the cable though, the important thing to remember is when you're ready to do the narrowing row, which I'm going to show you next, just make sure that you work the row where you narrow on the back of the project. So you want to complete a row on the front side of the project before you start the narrowing row. So let's learn how to work that row where we get narrower. So it's pretty similar, but we're gonna essentially move these two double crochet to the outside and that's going to close the gap. So we're going to start with our border. So just chain three, turn the work and work two more double crochet. What we want to do next is work a double crochet in the top here of this front post stitch from the previous round. So I'm just going to insert in the top and work just a normal double crochet. And that double crochet is basically like this leftmost double crochet that's like the flush indented part. So it's kind of like we moved it from there over to here. And now we're gonna shift our three front posts. We're gonna shift them more to the middle to make it narrower. So to do this, we're going to work three back post double crochet around these three front post stitches. So yarn over, and you might think, oh, I'm going around this one right here. No, we still wanna work around this one that we just crocheted in the top of. So if I come and bring my hook through on the, from the right side to the left, and work that back post double crochet around the front post double crochet from the previous row. So now I'm going to do that two more times. Work a back post double crochet in each of the next two front post double crochet from the previous round. Going to work another 
back post double crochet. I'll show you what it's looking like from the front of the work. So instead of having three double crochet on this border side, we now have four double crochet. And then we still kept working the front post, back post pattern on these three. But what we're going to do now when we come to this side again is we're going to skip these two double crochet in the middle and that's going to pull these cables towards each other closer. So I'm going to then, so I'm going to skip those two spots right there and work back post double crochet around these three front post double crochet from the previous row. So I'll work my first back post double crochet around the rightmost front post. Gets a little confusing with all the back post and front post, but it's okay, just keep, stick with it. And then we do a second back post. And a third back post. And now we want to, you can think of it like we're moving this double crochet that was in the middle from the previous row, we're gonna move it to the outside. So to move it from the between the cable sides to the outside of the cable, we're going to work a double crochet in the very top of this front post stitch that we already worked a back post around. So we're gonna work in the same stitch twice. We just finished working a back post in it. And then in the top of it, we're going to work a double crochet. Coming at the very top, I'm gonna work that double crochet. And now if you look from the front, we have started making our cable narrower. And then finishing up the row, we're just going to do three more double crochet to create that border. Now I know that can be all a little bit confusing because of the front post and back post and where are you actually going, but the trick to remember is you always work your front post and back post stitches into either a front post or back post stitch from the previous row. So if you're on a row where you're working back post stitches, you're always going to work them around the front post stitches from the previous row. If you're working front post stitches, you will always work them around the back post stitches from the previous row. So that's a little tip to keep in mind to help you go in the correct spot. And you can kind of think of it with these ones to create that space. It's kind of like we're moving those double crochet from the middle to the outside. So instead of having three double crochet, we end up with four double crochet on the outside and none on the middle. And now that we've brought our cables side by side, we are ready to work our cable crossover row. So I've already put together a video on that, so I'm gonna go through this a little bit quickly, but if you're not sure how to do this next row, hit that video, I'll make a little card pop up right there. So to work this row, we're going to chain three. And then because now we have four double crochet along here, we're going to work four double crochet along the side. So our chain three counts as our first, and we're going to work a second double crochet, a third double crochet, fourth double crochet, and then we're going to get ready to do that crossover pattern. So the crossover, we use front post treble crochet. So I'm gonna start by yarning over twice, and I'm going to work my first front post treble around the rightmost stitch on the left side of the cable. So I'm gonna skip the first three front post stitches, and I'm going to come around this fourth one. And work a front post treble crochet. So make sure you do that yarn over twice, because you'll need it to be long enough to get this crisscross pattern. And then I'm gonna do one more in each of the next two stitches. So I'm gonna do another front post treble in the next stitch. Kinda do a bunch of yarning over for this. And then a third one in that leftmost of my front post stitches. So then to create that crossover, I'm going to work three front post triple crochet in these three stitches here. So yarn over twice, find the rightmost one, we're gonna work around it. Gets a little tangled up looking here, but it's okay, just go with it. And then a second one, and the second one. Work that front post treble right around it. And then we've got one more front post treble to work around that third and final stitch from the previous row. 
and that is going to create that nice crossover. So to finish this row, we're going to come to these just normal double crochet, find the one to the very left of these front post stitches, and we're going to work four double crochet to finish off the row. So make sure you catch that one that's right there. It's kind of hidden behind these other stitches. And then a second one, a third double crochet, and a fourth double crochet in that turning chain that counts as our first stitch, which I did really tightly, so it's a little tricky getting in there for me. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to work a row across. That's going to be the exact same thing we did for the narrowing row. So on the narrowing row, you might remember that we worked four double crochet, then we worked our six back post double crochet working across the ones from the previous row, and then we did four more double crochet, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So start by working our four just normal double crochet. It's one, the second double crochet, third double crochet, and the fourth double crochet. And now we're going to work back post stitches around these trebles from the previous row. So the trick though is to make sure you work from right to left. If you're not quite sure, you can kind of flip your work over and see this one that's on top. Start with the very rightmost one and just work a back post double crochet around that. Come through right there and work our back post double crochet. Turn over and find that second one there work our second back post double crochet. We're gonna work a total of six of these. And then get that third one there. Work another back post double crochet. And then it gets a little tricky to find where to go in next because they're kind of behind these treble stitches from the previous row. So what I like to do is kind of just reach under here and just kind of pull this crisscross apart so you can really easily see them. And here we go. These three right here, those are our three that we're going to work in next. Here's what the three look like from the front side. Those three right there. So I'm going to work a back post double crochet around each one of those. This is our fifth back post double crochet. And now for our sixth and final back post double crochet. So basically what we did in that section is we worked six back post double crochet, just worked across those trebles from the previous row. And then as always, to finish it off, we're going to do our border. So right now we're doing four double crochet on our border because we don't have the space back in here yet. So work four double crochet across to finish the row. And now we just have one more row to learn, which is the widening row. And then that is the last thing that you need to know to be able to work this pattern. And the widening row is pretty similar to the narrowing row. So let's start on this. So again, we're going to chain three. So now what we did for the last three rows was we worked four double crochet on our border. But we wanna get back to working three double crochet on our border and then those two double crochet in the middle. So we're going to work our first three double crochet. This turning chain of three counts as our first one. So we're gonna work a second double crochet and then a third double crochet. But now you can think of it like we want to move this fourth double crochet into the middle. That's how we're going to think of it. So we don't wanna work here because we're gonna work it in the middle. So skip this fourth double crochet. Once we skip this stitch, we're going to work front post double crochet in the first three of these back post stitches from the previous row. So I'm gonna skip this guy, work a front post double crochet right around here. Work the second front post around this second back post stitch. And work our third front post around this third back post stitch. Now remember, I said we want to move this double crochet that we skipped, we wanna move it to the middle. So to do that, we're going to work a double crochet in the very top of the stitch that we just worked around. So this stitch right here, we just worked a front post double crochet on it. 
but we're gonna come to the top of it, which is kind of twisted back under here. You can kind of see that this is the stitch we went around. You can slide that stitch up and down and find the top, this V right here, and work a double crochet right into that spot, the very top of that stitch. So really you're working two around this one stitch where we work one around and then one in the top. And now we've moved that double crochet back to the middle instead of being on the side. So now we're gonna do this again, but work kind of in the opposite direction. This one that's the rightmost of these four double crochet, we don't want him to be on the left of the cable. We want him back in the middle. So to get him back in the middle, we're going to work a double crochet in the top of our next stitch. And we're gonna skip this guy in just a minute. So now we're going to work three front post stitches one in each of these three back post stitches. And so even though we've already worked in the top of this stitch right here, we're going to work another stitch around it. So around that same stitch, work a front post double crochet. And then easy peasy what we've been doing all along, work a front post double crochet around each of the next two back post stitches. I guess I shouldn't say easy peasy. I still have trouble sometimes with these front post and back post, but it's a little easier than some stuff. So now we're here to the side. Now remember, this one right here, we moved him to the middle. So we're gonna skip this stitch, and then we're just gonna work three double crochet to finish off the row. So skip this stitch, come in at the next double crochet, work our first double crochet, And now it's time to do what we did back in the beginning where we just work our three double crochet for our border, our three front or back post depending on which side of the work you're on, work two double crochet in the middle, three front or back post, and then three normal double crochet. And you can do that pattern again as many times as you want to make as long or as small of a distance between your crisscross cable spot. Now the only thing to remember is when you do decide that you're ready to do the narrowing round, the cable, and then the widening round, when you get to that point, you need to make sure that the last row you completed used front post double crochet. So if you finish a row but you just did back post double crochet, don't try to do the narrowing row yet. Do another row where you work front post double crochet and then you can do the narrowing row. And then from there, you just keep repeating this process and make your project as long and as awesome as you want it to be. Here is one last look at this project here so you can get an idea of what those cables should end up looking like. If you want to get the same distance between your cable crossover spots as I do, I would work, if we've reached this point, I would work a row going across with the back post where I leave the space in the middle and then I'd work another row coming back across with front post leaving a space in the middle and then I would do the narrowing row, the cable row, and the widening row. So basically I would do three rows between this set of three where I narrow, do the cable, and then widen. So that's the distance I used with this particular project, but it would look really pretty too if you were to do even more stitches and make it longer between the cables. So now you know another crochet cable to add to your skill set. I think this pattern is so much fun because it incorporates so many different things like we make them longer, we make them wider, and hopefully this gives you an idea of how you could manipulate cables and crochet using the same basic ideas and be able to achieve all kinds of different cables. So these nice long ones, wide ones, narrower ones, all kinds of possibilities. Also make sure if you haven't already subscribed to my channel that you hit that big red subscribe button down below. Y'all, I am so excited and I am th so thankful to everyone who has subscribed. When I checked earlier as of today, when I'm filming this, I only need 40, 40, 4 times 10, 40 more subs to go to reach the 1000 mark. So I'm super excited about that, so close. But make sure that if you haven't already subscribed to my channel but you wanna keep up to date with the different craft projects and tutorials that I'm sharing, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button. Also, I'd love to hear your comments on this video. First of all, let me know if you were able to follow along or if you have any questions or areas that you're like, okay, I'm not quite sure what you're doing and I'll try my best to help you work through and troubleshoot those problems. But I also wanna hear what kind of a project you're going to use this cable pattern for. As I said, this is going to eventually be a sweater, but you could use this with all kinds of different clothing things. This would be a cool cable to do on a blanket. That'd be really pretty. So I'd love to know how you're going to use this pattern. 
Well, I guess I am off to go do more homework because it's that time of year, you know. But at least I can keep working on crochet while I study and work on making some cozy sweaters because the weather's hopefully going to be getting colder soon or we're getting to fall. It's almost here. Not quite, but almost here. So I'm going to head on out for today. Happy crafting! So as someone who does a lot of DIYs, I'm constantly saving random stuff that's probably just trash and should be thrown out. Case in point, this empty cereal box, I actually do have some ideas of what I might do with this. But anyways, I just have a real quick question. It says it's naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Does that mean that A, you could naturally flavor this with unnatural flavors? And does it mean that B, you could unnaturally flavor it with natural flavors? I'm just very confused, not sure what they're saying. This leaves me with lots of questions.